I think that was one where we really started to see like the market slowed. I think people actually stopped spending. That was the first time that the Bank of Canada and, and economists and so on said that they actually saw people <laughs> limiting spending, reducing spending. Because we were talking about it in the middle of the summer, May, June. Restaurants are packed. Patios are full. Everyone's going to shows, concerts, music festivals. Like nobody stopped any spending. People were just continuing to live as they were. So mm -hmm. I think we're now starting to see the impacts of all of those rate hikes. So going the other way you know it, as you said Dave it's going to be a slow and steady but I think it will as it kind of eases off it'll it'll alleviate some pressure from, from some houses. You're listening to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast with your hosts Paul Stevenson, David Warren and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast your premier destination for navigating the vibrant landscape of Ottawa's real estate market. I'm Paul Stevenson, trusted mortgage agent level two. You can check me out at paulstevenson.ca. I'm thrilled to be your guide alongside the dynamic duo of real estate expertise, Greg Campbell, realtor at the Campbell Merrick Group with eXp Realty and David Warren, another seasoned mortgage agent, level two and owner at Referral Mortgages. Whether you're a first time home buyer, seasoned investor, someone who simply wants to stay informed about Ottawa's real estate trends, our podcast is designed for you. With Greg, David, and myself at the helm, you can trust that each episode is a treasure trove of information, <laughs> offering a 360 degree view of Ottawa's real estate landscape. Get ready to make informed decisions, uncover hidden opportunities, and embark on a journey that will redefine your understanding of real estate in Ottawa. Welcome to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast. <laughs> Where insight oh. meets action. That's, that's the tagline. It just, it just keeps going. Like, that's it just amazing. kept going and going. You just, that's the show. Done. Where insight meets action. We're out of here. It was a minute and a half intro. Oh, <laughs> man. That is a, that is a Sorry, long... Guys. I didn't read all of it. There was actually more, it. but it was oh, too much. Oh, man. It was too much. Read it all every time. That was, oh. that was like Greg's Coles Notes the other week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me summarize this 10-minute article. You know what? A I, summary. I did look. I did look <laughs> back at the time, and it was it was two minutes. It was it was only two minutes. It On two minutes. Was exaggerated it was, five minutes. It was a it was a long two minutes. <laughs> it was a very informative two minutes, David. Don't kid yourself. How was oh, the weekend, everyone? <laughs> How are we doing, Greg? You turned <laughs> off yesterday. You said. I did. And it was amazing. I've been doing open houses for the last four weeks. And yesterday I had a full family day. We went and saw Trolls. We went and saw the new Trolls movie. Mm. Good soundtrack. What was it here. called? Trolls 3? Band Zone? No. Bro Trolls Zone? Band Back Together. Band Back Together. Nice. Band Together. It was great. Nice. At the cinema. Yes. Society could use a message like that. It did that. Right? Did some cleaning. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> very true. But it was, it was good. It was good. Lots of trolls out there. Hey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, trolls. Mm -hmm. Hey. Yeah, I did much the same. Saturday was was fairly calm. We had a couple hockey games, soccer game. Parents came over for uh, dinner yesterday with my aunt, but that was it. Other than that, I just kind of took it easy. It was nice. Nice, nice to kind of have some time at home quietly. We're getting into that season. We're yeah. getting into that yeah, season almost. where, uh, you know, we have a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like it. What'd you get up to, Dave? I took Oliver to meet Santa yesterday that went horribly, went just flat out horribly. He was very excited from a distance and then got close and there was a pure full meltdown. It was pretty hilarious. Awesome. At least we got it. We got photographic evidence of it, which was that's amazing. Very comical. That's amazing. So, yeah. A lot of pressure as yeah. a kid, you know, it's like, <clears> that's <throat> the guy. That's, that's the guy that's he's yeah. bringing me gifts. I better, better show up, you know, and then <laughs> the pressure is overwhelming and you just crumble. Oh Yeah. And he doesn't oh, look yeah, normal, was... you know. He's giving out candy no, canes. No. It's very confusing. The whole thing is <laughs> overwhelming. Is it, are, are you guys, are you, did you guys ask Santa for anything this year? I don't know if you're asking your child. No, 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 are you asking, no, no, asking, no, no, asking no. your child? I'm, ta I'm talking to my tor Torep colleagues. <laughs> I haven't yet. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> That'll be a Christmas Eve request, maybe. Yeah. It'll be like, you know what, Santa? I'm still here, bud. Yeah. <laughs> still loving you. Still missing you. <laughs> How are we looking wrapping up the year? I know we have the November stats, which were lackluster to say the least. The last three months have been obviously a bit of a down, well, not even a downturn. I mean, it depends on how you're looking at it, but slower, right? We've it's, seen rates come down dramatically in the last week, like in some cases, 50 basis points. Like I think a month ago, we were talking about, you know, 
five seven nine being a good rate. Most lenders are kind of in the five one nine to five three nine range now. So we've seen a pretty big drop there. Bank of Canada held rates. Like there's a lot of uh, a lot of positives, even though everything like the market seems fairly stagnant. I think I think it was TD that announced yesterday that they see all of Ontario basically entering into a full buyer's market. Did you hear that, Craig? Or have you heard that? <clears throat> Certainly seems that way. We've been saying that, but what do we know? What do we know? And I, I was actually, I, I forgot to include this. I was at a mortgage broker's mortgage approvals party on Friday night at the yeah, casino. Huge. huge party, huge event. Shout out to, to Brock, our friend Brock. And the, with all the mortgage brokers there and realtors, the, just the consensus of, you know, what you just said with the fixed rates coming down was that, you know, as much as people speculate or hate on us thinking that nothing is going to happen and it's going to keep going down. The overall vibe is that spring is going to be good. The people that have been waiting will sell closer to what they've been asking for, whether they take their house on, on or off the market, the ones that sold at less obviously had to go, but everyone's excited. The, a number that I'm sure you guys know, like everyone's business in general this year, I guess, kind of across the board when it comes to realtors and brokers, I guess, was down about 40%. And that's kind of like a Brock was mentioning as like a nationwide level though, right? So everyone was doing the same, but everyone was just kind of down 40%. You know, it's just, uh, it's just one of those things that happens, right? And he was just talking about the cycles as we talk about on the show. So, I mean... You know, will it go down more? It's Canada. Will they down the rates so that to boost the economy, get people moving again? I think so, but we'll see. So I, I was with Scotia, their area VP covers pretty well all of Eastern Canada on Wednesday morning. And he was, he, he was stating that their chief economist for Scotia Bank is predicting an entire 1% drop by the Bank of Canada in the latter half of 2024. So rate drops not starting until kind of the May timeframe, <clears throat> like we'd mentioned, before, talked about before, uh, but a full percent over a uh, by year end, which if that's the case, obviously means a very busy market and they're, predi and they're expecting a, a very busy spring market for, for Scotia, uh, Scotia Mortgage Authority. So that's not just us. That's one of the biggest <clears throat> banks and they have a massive market share in the market. And that's what they're seeing in their chief economist, who's been pretty well bang on the money for every single rate expectation and, and market expectation over the years. So if that's the case, <clears throat> then, you know, that's, that'll, be, that'll make for a very interesting second half of the year. I think it's going to be yeah. pain going, going into this over the winter for a lot of home sellers. And, and there's going to be a lot of opportunities and a lot of listings, but as soon as they, you know, if they do start dropping the rates that quickly for the Bank of Canada, then yeah, I think we're going to be into that extremely busy buyer's market. Yeah. And for those, you know, that quarter percent is, I think we said last time was about 20 to $25 per hundred thousand roughly. So, you know, if you have mm -hmm. a $500,000 mortgage, it drops 1%. It's a decent, like it's a good enough savings that people are actually going to have some pressure alleviated. Now, when that happens, as you said, Dave, like, I think we really started to see, I think the last, the, the most recent, the last rate hike that happened before they started holding rates, I think was really kind of the straw that broke the camel's back to use a, an old term. I think that was one where we really started to see like the market slowed. I think people actually stopped spending. That was the first time that the Bank of Canada and, and economists and so on said that they actually saw people <laughs> limiting spending, reducing spending. Because we were talking about it in the middle of the summer, May, June restaurants are packed patios are full everyone's going to shows concerts music festivals like nobody stopped any spending people were just continuing to live as they were so mm -hmm. i think we're now starting to see the impacts of all of those rate hikes so going the other way you know it, as you said david it's going to be slow and steady but i think it will as it kind of eases off it'll it'll alleviate some pressure from from some households oh greg you're on uh, mute there uh, oh, sorry. I was just saying that, you know, December things slow down regardless. I talked to some uh, restaurant owners that I know, uh, you know, they were down other than a couple restaurants that had just opened, they seem to be doing okay. So, you know, people are still out spending, but it's interesting because this morning I was telling you guys that I was watching, I watched multiple videos about Canada and how people are just fed up, uh, you know, 60, I think it was 67% of the population feel that it's being mismanaged. 
that we're just not doing things right, upset with the economy, no one can afford anything, people in Vancouver spending 100% of their income on rent, borrowing to, to uh, pay for their day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, you know, people, I immigrants, people that immigrated here, say, you know, six to 10 years ago, going home, uh, you know, also while there's more, there's more coming in, but it just seems that Canada generally overall throughout the world is, is looked at now as the most mismanaged country in the world. And I guess that's, you know, you got to look at that from mainstream media, um, you know, production, basically the, I'm sure there's, there's other countries that aren't doing as well as Canada, but I mean, from what people see in, you know, in, in the big, in the big countries, we're doing, we're in pretty rough shape. So with the, the housing economy, who, who knows what's going to happen here? Yeah. I think no matter what, with where cost of living is and all of that, people are going to be upset. And then it, it always goes the other way too. When, when the rates are low, like we saw and the market going crazy because rates people are money upset. Being free mm -hmm. and people getting free money that, that people are upset because the housing prices increase. Uh, so, you know, I don't, no matter what the market is, people don't really find that happiness <laughs> regardless. No, in terms of, in terms of the market, no, in terms of yeah. the gen general state of living, I guess, you know, it's just, yeah, it's hard. And especially this time of year, I think it's hard for a lot of people, but you know, do what yeah, we well, can, I guess. Well, we, we saw it of, you know, there was a, a globe article talking about the rise in consumer debt and credit delinquencies. And it was a report by Equifax that the average balance of credit card holders rose to $4,119 in the third quarter, up from 3727 27 in the third quarter of 2022 and surpassing pre-COVID-19 levels. So, oh, wow. <clears throat> you know, meaning the average balance that people hold is higher now than it was pre-COVID. So we had like mm. a huge drop during COVID, people not spending much money and and that come down. And then the other being the there was an increase of 3.4% of people making just the minimum payment on their cards as opposed to making an overpayment. Mm. <clears throat> and then the other way that a drop of one and a half percent of people paying off their balance in full. So you've got people that typically pay off their balance in full that dropped by one and a half percent and going the other way, people only making the minimum payments increased by 3.4 for an overall Canadian consumer debt of 2.4 trillion, an 80, almost an 81 billion increase from the previous year. So obviously that's <clears throat> illustrating that people are living off their credit cards, carrying a higher balance in order to, to cover, you know, their regular expenses and 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 really just to get by and you know which is obviously tough and and coming into like you said a season this type of year coming into christmas is when you see people spending the most and grabbing for that credit card to cover mm -hmm. expenses even more so so i i think it'll be interesting to see in january what are what the the christmas sales numbers were like i bet this will be the lightest christmas in years i bet this will be yeah. the least amount spent at christmas and i think it's a good thing you know, especially when we know that most of our money goes elsewhere and doesn't stay in our pocket or stay in our country. I'd, I'd be interested to know from anyone listening of, of whether you're planning on like spending less, more the same as previous years, even, you know, yeah. how, how it's kind of impacted anyone listening. Yeah, I forget. I think you sent something a little while ago, Dave, about the next, someone had said, I think it was Warren Buffett said that like the next 12 months from like a stock investment sort of business growth standpoint, that the next 12 months will be like outrageously detrimental for retail stores. Like people, now that we said like as rates have now increased and people are limiting spending that they're going to get kind of the brunt of like that money will no longer be spent mm -hmm. at those kind of additional. Yeah. Choices. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, like voluntary purchases, right. It's going to be spent on gas, which is more expensive food, which is obviously more expensive and so on. I, I should also comment too. I know we've talked about this off air, but we did receive some emails and comments recently with regards to uh, us being maybe directed in our comments. And it is hard, especially when we're having an open conversation, we're talking about federal budgets, spending the economy, like there's going to be criticism and there's going to be compliments, you know, mm -hmm. like we're, we try to, I think mm -hmm. we try to be as nonpartisan as as possible, but no matter what, like we're, we're here to kind of give our opinions and obviously our opinion is going to be different from everyone else. Like that's why it's our opinion. And Dave, you have yours, Greg, you have yours. All of our opinions differ 
most of the time, you know, but we try to see everyone's angle. And I think that's the most important thing. And I think that's something we have lost maybe in, in Canada over the last few years is that ability to actually have our own voice and, and say what we yes. think and learn from other people. And if you have a different opinion, you tell me, I learn from you, you learn from me and we collaborate, you know, we, we yeah. share ideas. And I think to add to that, I think it's very important for people to understand too, that listen to our show, understand why they're listening to podcasts in the first place and not really listening to mainstream news is because the mainstream news doesn't, you don't get the real personality of the person speaking about the news that's been written for them or, or with them to be presented, right? We're just sitting here having a conversation about us. You tune in, you like us or you don't like us and you tune out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also unplanned, like none of this is about. scripted, right? We don't have teleprompters, yeah. like we're literally just <laughs> chatting. And uh, yeah, we hope there's we hope there's value. I think it actually surprised a lot of people how little prepared we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <These recordings. laughs> well, we know there's definitely no teleprompters, guys, to tell us that. I just wanted to go back. I, I did put a, a graphic in there, Stephen. If you if you can pull it up, it was just it says TD Economic states that Ontario is entering a province-wide buyer's market for the first time in history outside of a recession. Sales to listings ratio at lows not seen since the 2008 financial crisis and 90s housing market collapse. So you can basically it shows from 1988 until now. It says sales to new listings ratio. So percentage-wise, you can see around. 2021 20, 22 it kind of plummets and then starts to go back up again probably as covid recovered and then now we've seen it at again like they said it's the lowest it's been since 1993 it seems yeah mm -hmm. and i mean it's it could still go down a little bit i don't know how much more but mm -hmm. i definitely have a sense of that at least over the next month and at what point does it become a buyer's market i mean this the, that chart certainly shows that you would think it's, like, it's hard maybe not on paper but well it certainly it's, it's, is it's tricky too, right? Because there's some neighborhoods that will never be buyer's markets, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, like we always say on this show, it's it's specific to a neighborhood and the type of product. So you can't judge this economy or this, you know, a graph like this on, you know, it's a general, it's general information. Mm -hmm. Yes, it may affect certain areas and it affects certain areas more than others is what I should say. Well, um, and those smaller markets, those smaller markets are really creating that many numbers as far as listings or sales that are going to impact the broader province. So obviously, you know, being in Ontario, the numbers in the GTA are going to be like the majority of oh, what yeah. the stats make up as opposed yeah. to maybe an Armbrier or a Carlton place. You know, what they're doing in their market is not going to impact these graphs as as much. They obviously play a part, but... To your point, you know, when we're looking at, and it's the same with the average, you know, we, I know we have the numbers uh, for November of, of the average for prices, but again, that's the average for the entire board, but each neighborhood, each area is, is different and makes up that makes up that aggregate. I have an interesting comment. I didn't think of this because of course I didn't write it down. The people that I've spoken with investors from Toronto, you remember a few years ago, tons of investors from Toronto, Vancouver buying in Ottawa, tons. And, you know, this was pre-COVID, it started, then it kind of went through it. Now what's happening with a lot of the developments that just closed within the last like six to 12 months, uh, there, you'll find in Ottawa, you'll find maybe a street, let's say the street has 20 homes on it. I will tell you that almost like 40% of those homes will have been investor purchased from Toronto. And now there are some that are holding on, but there are some that are selling because if they don't sell, they can't hold on to what they have in Toronto right now where they live or their other investments. Mm -hmm. So those are the homes that are selling for a lot less, especially in the city right now, because they have to let them go and they're just taking, you know, they're just taking, they're walking on it basically and losing. There are others who are financially in a position that they can maintain it. Whether they whether they rent at what they need to cover the mortgage payment or not, but those are like the you know as we've spoken before, the buyers with more cash or the investors with more cash on hand. Small mortgages are just completely cash purchases. They'll just rent it for a while until uh, everything just kind of catches up and they can sustain it. But there's a lot of it. I've been hearing a lot of like full like forty percent of a street with with homes from investors purchased, half of them selling, half of them keeping. Interesting stat based on. The comment of Toronto being, you know, what runs the numbers for Ontario. Yeah, I feel like anyone who's got an investment property that was on a variable rate over the last few years is certainly like that cash flow numbers have just completely shifted, obviously, which is, you know, as you said, Greg, it's probably 
digging into a lot of a lot of pockets from a, from the investor yeah. standpoint, or they're increasing rents, which again we're seeing. You know, rent has gone up. I think it was what forty percent or something in the last three years. It was something some ridiculous stat a couple weeks ago. So in this sort of market, Greg, I know we've talked about this at different times over the last seven years we've been doing this podcast or however long <laughs> it's been. In a market like this, if you're dealing with a someone who's selling and buying, like, are you suggesting they find a place, put in a condition for their place to sell, or do they sell and then try to find something quickly? Like, what is your advice currently? Obviously, I have yeah, my opinion, but it's, asking it, the expert. I'm, I'm dealing with that right now on something. And it's a very valid question. And it really depends on the property, the capacity of the buyer or seller, well, of the seller, sorry, the capacity of the seller and what, they, what they're really looking for. Because I have one that it would have sold for sure. It's a unique property. It's got, it's got a lot of land and it's got land that you could also build another home on. There's a certain property that they want. They don't want to put in an offer until they, they're sorry, they don't want to put in an offer without a first refusal. They want to be able to sell their home as a condition. That's the only condition that they have. So yeah. it's been on the market for a while. So we're going to go ahead and try to do that. But for their home, the, the conversation is like, what, like, what's it worth now at this point? Cause it's so unique. And I, they were pushing, you know, for, for me to price it. I priced it and I said, but for it's so unique. We need an appraisal on it. But then I just paused on it because the market started changing. And I'm like, if we get an appraisal today, in 30 days, there's no way in the world it's going to be the same appraisal mm -hmm. just because things were dropping so quickly. So they waited. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it on exclusively off market through me, obviously, at the price that they initially wanted, see what kind of activity we can get. And then if we get the right activity over the next four to six weeks, then we're going to go ahead and submit submit an offer basically you know, without a first refusal, waiting for an offer or knowing that the property is desired. So it's, it's tricky, but I would definitely find something that you want. I would submit a first refusal on anything. I would make mm -hmm. every offer conditional on selling your home as long as your home was priced to sell. And for anyone that's thinking of that, if you're going to put an offer on a home conditional on selling your home, your offer needs to be aggressive it needs to be probably close to the asking price or else they won't accept it unless they've been on the market for months and you have to be realistic with your pricing your house has to be ready to list before you even submit that offer when the selling agent asks your agent is the house ready to sell if they say no it's like yeah it's like get the mm -hmm. fuck out of here yeah so yeah. you need to you need to be ready to go within 48 hours and that's what i told my guys too so like they're actually clean getting their house ready this week i'm going into, i'm taking photos and video this week and we're going to put it up exclusive available for anyone who wants to shop you know over the holidays or, or through the winter and we'll see we'll see what happens with it that's good it. answer <laughs> <laughs> good should, answer should good we answer. touch on some of the some you know talk about listing and, and everything let's touch on the stats a little bit yeah. from from november because i think they're you know even looking at the new listings or or months of inventory price points it's you know not really that surprising of you know prices having dipped slightly 1.6 percent yeah month but, over month yeah i mean what's I your know, from uh, uh, year over year over year sorry yeah what what's your take on it on them greg on on the stats i mean it's kind of standard we're down you know and, and we're what's this 31.8 percent below the five-year average 27.4 percent below the 10-year average for the month of november in terms of sales you know, year to date basis, home sales totaled 11,421 units during the, you know, the 11 year to date. And that's a decline of 11.7% uh, from the same period in 2022. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, if you look at the cycles and everything, this is kind of, it's just part of it. And, you know, I've been saying mm -hmm. for a while, I think we're going to flatline. I don't think things are going to dip much more than they are. Mm -hmm. They're going to, you know, it's going to get pretty stagnant over the next month and a half anyways but i don't know man i i just i'm i'm always optimistic that people will continue buying and selling and the main reason i say that is because i'm still getting calls from from buyers mm -hmm. i've yeah. got four properties up for sale now and they've all had showings they've had showings we're close to an offer on one um because it's priced more competitively than the others in the market 
of that of that of that product. And I got a call. Like I I posted a reel of a property the other day. I got a call from from a friend of mine. You know, she's like, I think this is the house for for me and and uh, and my family. So you know, it's 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 people are ready when they're ready to buy. A lot of people don't pay attention to the noise, and the ones that pay attention to all the noise are usually the ones that end up losing out or or get caught up in the compulsive buy of like, oh my god, I'm this is never this opportunity is never going to happen again. I need to buy mm. today. This opportunity is never going to happen again. Of course, it's going to happen again, but don't don't get excited about it. Make you know mm -hmm. a deliberate a deliberate move. Yeah, I wonder too if people like people that are thinking about buying, especially when they see you know, rates are decreasing. They're kind of going through that. I know, again, we talked about this off air, but I had two clients recently and we talked about this last week, actually, about Dave and I being able to actually float rates down. So, you know, if you locked in previously and you don't close until end of December, we can actually speak to the lender and have the rate decreased to what the rates are today. And I had two clients last week that I did this for. One of them in payments and interest, one of them, it saved them 26,000 and the other one, 36,000, mm. just from requesting that rate float down. And I'll tell you right now, the banks are not going to call you and say, hey, Dave, Greg, rates drop. Let's save you $30,000. Like they're just yeah, not right. going to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's not that maybe, maybe they would do it if they, if they had the capacity, but they're not doing it. You know, they're not, they're not reaching out proactively to do that. So there, there, there is a benefit to that decreasing rate environment. And, you know, if you're in the process of buying a home, you don't need to worry about, oh, rates are on their way down. I should wait. Like we can still, you put that closing date three, four months out you'll still be able to take advantage of the decreasing rates. Yeah. Any, any reasonable broker is watching your closing date and watching rates and up to 48 hours before closing can request that float down to the lowest available. So you're getting best of both worlds. You're locking in a rate. If rates go up, you're protected. And if they go down, your broker's going to be able to, to drop that rate to the lowest available. To Paul's point, it's not something that you're your bank advisor is going to be watching. They're not paying attention to your closing date and, and where rates are in order to, to get that voluntarily dropped for you. So I think, yeah, I think that's a really big, important point, Paul, especially with, with where bonds have been going, you know, with where, how they've dropped so drastically, especially in the last couple of weeks that, that there's, there's been huge, huge drops. Like you said, any, on the five year upwards of half a percent on to, from some banks, and that's on the five year, but also the three and four years have been dropping as well. So certainly speak to your advisor. If you have an upcoming closing, ask where they're at. For those that are in the commercial market, those, the bonds, the CMB has been coming down as well drastically in the last couple of weeks, which has really helped from a qualifying on commercial or multi-res properties too. Yeah. And what, in one case, the client was doing a transfer. <clears throat> it was a renewal that was coming up and they were doing a transfer and their original rate was 594. And we booked that in September and now they dropped it down to 539. So it's like outrageous savings. Like just like, oh, wow, you know, $250 a month in payments alone is, you know, makes a huge difference. So all that to say, Greg, good time to buy. Buyer's market. <laughs> hey, <good. laughs> hey, hey, man, you, you know what? It's like I, I, I say to my buyers, like right now, they're just like, oh, what do you think about, you know, starting here? I'm like, let's go for it. Like I had whatever, to make that plug because someone like made a comment you last do. week. Mm. Hey, here's <laughs> Paul's weekly, Paul's weekly pro oh, yeah. buy. <laughs> Let's go, pump <laughs> it up. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Uh -huh. So I, I think it's also important to just go back to the stats for a minute. You know, there's a new, the new listings, there's an increase of 2.7% from last November. Um, and the new listings are 8.4% above the five-year average and 10.4% above the 10-year average for the month of November. So that's, that's substantial. And there's a ton of ad, like active listings, 2,752. It's a sizable gain of 15.8 uh, from the end of November, 2022. So active listings are 53.9% above the five-year average hmm. for the month of November, which is massive. Um, and active listings ha haven't been this high in uh, more than five years. Now we had a shortage of listings for a long time. Remember there was like six, I think it was like was 30 nothing. weeks of inventory or something at one point. So there's there like hundred homes so, for sale uh, in the whole city. Yeah. On the, on the orb listing, they've got <clears throat> the months of inventory for 2023 at 2.3 months currently compared to 2022, 1.6, and then 2020 and 21 were 0.8 and 0.9. So not even a full months of inventory. 
when you go back to pre-pandemic, 2019 was 1.6, 2018, 2.4. So actually more inventory mm -hmm. than we currently have. 2017, 3.2, 2016, 4.8, 5.7 the previous year, 5.5. So even in 2014, 2015 was as high as five and a half months of inventory. And we're still sitting at only 2.3. So it does, it does kind of illustrate that there's not, you know, over the, you know, over those years right now, we're, we still don't have a ton of run up. Like if, if those people on the sidelines, when, and if they decide to get back in and likelihood is, is when those delink the credit card debt kind of comes down and rates start to come down and stabilize, or there's some positive news in the market. As soon as there's one news article about the major banks dropping their rates, because right now they have, but they haven't made it a new in the news cycle. Like the Globe and Mail hasn't talked about mm -hmm. TD dropping their rates or about Scotia or RBC where they've dropped them slightly because they haven't been huge drops. But as soon as that hits the news cycle, that's when people any becomes positive news that people kind of come back. So looking at that, to me, looking at that new, sorry, the, the, the listings ratio of 2.3 mm -hmm. months, there's not a huge ton of run up. Like it's, it doesn't take much for that to be depleted pretty quickly. So I'm curious, like, you know, from a, a go forward basis of how much more we add to that before that starts to come down and, and whether that comes down during, during the winter months or, or coming right out of it. But um, and spring market too, always a matter of time, as we've seen historically, the spring market is always kind of a race to the bottom for lenders. Like they're all, they, they know that's when the peak of transactions are happening then and kind of mid, mid to late summer. So they do oftentimes, you know, probably no coincidence, but there's uh mm. there's usually a decrease in rates come February, March, you know, kind of leading into that, that spring market. So we'll see what happens, but yeah, I think over the winter, as we talked about, I, I think we'll see some listings either the sign will disappear, as you mentioned, Greg, or they'll just come off realtor all together and then they'll repost in, you know, late February, early March and mm -hmm. hope to get, hope to get some of the, you know, like a fresh look at, at their property. Yeah. I think there's a lot of that. There's exhaustion right now with some sellers where they're going to pull it off like now, basically mm -hmm. until probably mm -hmm. the second week of January, which is fair. You know what I mean? I can, I can understand that just over the holidays, unless they, unless the property is vacant or or whatever. But I mean, if you got your house all ready for Christmas, you got family, you just, and you've been on for, let's say three months, like, you know, I can, I can appreciate that. Even though, as I've said before, I'm a big believer in holiday and winter selling. Yeah. Yeah. Me but too. Uh, but like that, I said, my last two homes have been bought. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. But from that angle, I can, I can get it. Like, it's just exhausting for some people. I know yeah. a few, I, I actually know a few elderly home sellers who've, who've done that. And, uh, you know, it, one of them is a property that my clients are interested in, but they do have a house to sell. So I'm in contact with the agent and we're just kind of like, okay, like we're all, we're almost ready. Let's just wait it out. And so they're like, yeah, whenever you guys want to do something, let us know. Well, let's not, let's not also forget too, that when you're listing your home, it's a very unnatural condition in your house. Like your house is never that clean or organized except no. for that one hour mm -hmm. window when people are coming to look at it, yeah. but going into the holidays, you know, you're having family over you know, Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you're celebrating, there's going to be, you know, family gatherings and, you know, wrapping paper and everything's going to be out of sorts. So I think people are probably like, let's just take the month, enjoy the holidays and we'll, we'll get back at her in the new year. Yeah. Just don't take That's it. all I have. That's all okay. I have for today. I, let's, let's slide into the mood boost. Yes. <clears throat> you got a couple yes. for us? Boost I have three. three. I have three. Number one. Why do chicken coops only have two doors? Because if they'd had four, they would be chicken sedans. Mm. Wee! Coops. Ooh wee! Number two. A woman is on trial for beating her husband to death with his guitar collection. The judge said, first offender? She says, no, first a Gibson, then a Fender. Ooh. My new sound. Woo! And number three, my wife caught me standing on the bathroom scale, sucking in my stomach. Mm. <laughs> Not going to help, she said. Sure it does, I said. It's the only way I can see the numbers. <laughs> little holiday, little holiday eating joke, you know? <laughs> I oh. like it. Oh, where'd oh. Paul go? 
We lost I'm here. him. I'm, oh, he gone. I'm back. He gone. Yeah, sorry. sorry, guys. My, he gone. I don't know what happened there. Vanished. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Next week, we're going to be doing our live show Monday afternoon. So if you're listening to this now on Tuesday or sometime during the week, Monday at 2 p.m., we're going to be live on YouTube. It'll still be released Tuesday morning if that's uh, of interest, but uh, it'll be an interesting show. It'll be our last of the year until the new year. And guys, I'm excited. I don't know, I know you, but um, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Lucas, com Lucas coming down and uh, uh, a client, Matt, Matt Williams is coming down. Matthew Williams, he's going to stop in and join us. Yes. And, and from, from a long time, another long time listener, a realtor in the, in the Valley, but Kevin Cosgrove will be there giving us yeah. an update on the, on the Carlton Place and surrounding area market. Mm -hmm. So should get some good fresh take. It won't just be us talking about pie. <laughs> You know what's a good day to buy? December 12th, 2023. Get out there. Get out there um, and do it. Yeah, thank you, everyone. If you're if you're listening, leave us a review. You know, give us a like, give us a follow, share. And the episodes are released. I don't know where, if you're listening, watching, but they're released on YouTube for video and then for audio on every streaming platform. So, you know, Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, etc. So we'll see you next week, everyone. Have a good day. Have a good week. Bye. Have a great, have a great all of that. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe because we'd really like that.